叫你蹲下去，叫他起来。Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we can just uh, get things started. Uh, I'm Tao, and this is Catherine. Uh, we are Duo Bazaar, uh, piano duo team, and uh, uh, we want to uh, thank uh, South Korea Symphony uh, so that we are able to uh, come back and bring you another program uh, of wonderful piano music. Uh, and this afternoon, as you can uh, see the setting, uh, it's a slightly more elaborate uh, than last time. Um, we have uh, two wonderful instruments here, uh, so we are able to bring you uh, music uh, for two piano, which is music for piano duo. Uh, 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 music for piano duo is really a wonderful repertoire, uh, and we really enjoy working on these music and performing them. Uh, sadly, uh, uh, very often we are not really able to actually bring this music to live audience uh, because many musical uh, venues uh, actually uh, don't always have two concert level instruments ready. Uh, so very often uh, we simply play a piano duet, which is forehand music for one piano, which we will be playing for you uh, later this, this afternoon also. Uh, but to begin, uh, we're gonna actually play for you a uh, music for two pianos. Uh, and this is probably the earliest uh, great masterwork for this combination, uh, music by Mozart. Uh, this is his sonata for uh, two pianos. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, as far as I know, uh, one of the only two works that he wrote for this combination. And as you know, uh, Mozart really excelled at every genre that he composed for. Uh, and for this piece, there's some, uh, I guess, additional uh, interest uh, for audience uh, and even uh, researchers alike. Uh, in the early 1990s, uh, there was a, a study done by uh, neurologists uh, uh, try to determine whether listening to classical music uh, stimulates in a positive way of brain activities in humans. Uh, and this was the composition they used uh, to do that research. And the result was that it was a positive effect on human brain activity. So uh, it came to be known as the Mozart effect. And it was also after that study was done that a lot of uh, uh, musical uh, CDs were produced titled uh, Mozart for Babies, uh, for instance, because people think playing uh, Mozart's music uh, for infants uh, will have positive brain development uh, at, at an early age. So here we're going to play for you two movements uh, from this wonderful composition, the first and the third movement. Uh, the first movement uh, is very orchestral, uh, almost like an operatic overture. Uh, and the third movement uh, is very, very cheerful, very celebratory, very playful between the two instruments. So two very lively movements from the uh, Mozart piano sonata for sonata for two pianos. Hope you enjoy.
enjoy these two movements from this great sonata for two piano. Uh, and not only it's uh, uh, stimulating emotionally, but hopefully uh, in terms of our mental capacity was also stimulated. Uh, so next, uh, I'll play for you uh, a few solo selections. Uh, start off with uh, a wonderful piece by Frederick Chopin, uh, most likely everybody's favorite composer for the piano. Uh, this is also one of his most well-known works, his uh, Ballad for Piano uh, number one. He wrote four ballads during his life, and the first one, perhaps by far the most often performed and the most popular. It's a very dramatic work, uh, combined uh, fierce virtuosity along with real warm lyricism. Um, and it was uh, also uh, made even more popular and famous uh, with the movie The Pianist uh, made by the great uh, director Roman Polanski uh, depicting the life of a pianist, Polish pianist during the Holocaust. And uh, a large portion of this work was used uh, towards the end of the film uh, when uh, the character uh, Spielmann, uh, who was the pianist, uh, played uh, a large section of this work for a German officer in an abandoned uh, room uh, with a really dust-filled piano. So here I'm going to play for you uh, on a wonderful instrument, uh, the entire Ballad Number no. 1 by Chopin.
Uh, next, uh, I'll play for you uh, a composition that's uh, quite different uh, from what you just heard. Uh, we're moving uh, up a couple centuries. Uh, this is uh, early 20th century work. Three Argentinian dances uh, by Alberto Hinastella. Uh, Hinastella uh, has long been considered the father of classical music in Argentina. Uh, and this set of three dances uh, he composed very early on in his career. He was in his early 20s when he wrote them. Uh, and they have gone on to become some of his most popular works. Uh, the first one uh, is written in a very interesting and unique style, uh, very much modeled after one of his contemporaries, uh, Bela Bartok, the great Hungarian composer. He used a bitonal technique uh, for the first dance. Um, my left hand will be mostly performing on the black keys while my right hand on the white ones. So it creates a very unique and sometimes maybe slightly disturbing uh, tonal clash, uh, but it's all well intended. The second one is a very lyrical slower dance, uh, sort of in the model of a tango. The third one, uh, going back to uh, very energetic uh, music right away, um, and it's kind of a really wild dance uh, in the style of a toccata, uh, sort of a technical showpiece. And again, uh, very much in the style of some of his great contemporaries, such as Prokofiev and Stravinsky. So here is the three Argentinian dances by Alberto Finastera.
now I'm happy to welcome back my dual partner, Catherine. Uh, and we're going to uh, uh, conclude uh, this afternoon's program with music for piano for hands on one piano. Uh, this last composition uh, was by Felix Mendelssohn, the great German composer. Uh, he was an extraordinary composer, extraordinary pianist, violinist, conductor, uh, writer, uh, and amazingly, painter. Uh, he was also sort of unusual in a way that, uh, like, uh, apart, uh, unlike most composers from that era, he was actually born into a uh, very a wealthy family. Uh, so like all wealthy European families at the time, uh, they put their kids on a, a all expense paid uh, European journey, if you will, uh, just to gain experience to see the wonderful sites, uh, famous locales. Uh, and uh, during these trips, uh, Mendelssohn composed some of his most well-known works, such as the Scottish Symphony, the Italian Symphony, uh, and the orchestral overture Fingal's Cave. Um, and uh, he was also able to sort of exercise his talent as a painter. So I'm going to hold this score close to the camera so everybody can see this is actually one of his watercolors off the famous Amalfi coast in Italy. So this work we're going to play for you is called Andante and Allegro Brillant, uh, one of the most virtuosic work that he wrote uh, for piano duet. It was written on the occasion of a pension fund fundraising concert that he hosted for the Gewandhaus Orchestra in Leipzig. Uh, and Felix Mendelssohn was the music director of that orchestra. Um, and on that wonderful occasion, uh, his uh, dual partner was the amazing Clara Schumann, uh, the wife of the composer Robert Schumann. So, you know, if I could go back in time, would love to hear that performance. Uh, so the piece is uh, broken into two sections. The Andante was very lyrical, beautiful, and almost operatic. And then it transitioned into this uh, really highly virtuosic allegro section while the two of us sort of chasing after each other uh, and almost a million notes were put into the score. So hopefully we can capture most of them. So if you enjoy uh, the last work by Mendelssohn, Andante, Allegro, Brillant, and we also again like to thank uh, South Korea Symphony for making this live stream concert possible. Thank you.
again uh, for spending some time with us. And again, thank, uh, I'd like to thank South Florida Symphony for making this possible. And uh, hopefully, hopefully everyone have a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy. See you next time. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.